And they are away now. So Great Britain up in lane number one, Switzerland in lane two, Croatia in three, Australia in four, Germany in five, and New Zealand in lane number six. And the Swiss now off nice and quick. Great Britain has really come on well um, in this event. It's, their be it's the best quad that Britain has ever been produced. And what has made a difference a little bit is uh, Tom Salisbury, who's changed from sweet rowing. He's come into the bow seat there. He only started sculling in, uh, in February and uh, did well in the trials, in the sculling trials, and um, uh, found a place for himself in the bow seat uh, there at the top of the picture, in the bow seat of the British men's quad. And he's just, as he's kind of improved and become more confident in his sculling, um, the boat has got better and better. And uh, it's nice to see British sculling back where it should be after really about 25, 30 years where we've not really been doing so well. First 250 metres been pretty good for Great Britain up in lane at number one. The British crew coached by Mark Banks. New coach in again into this quartet. We're looking at Germany in lane at number five. And the British really need a very quick first 500 metres across the semi-final qualification times. Great Britain have qualified with the slowest, the sixth time. So they really need to get into this final. And they're doing that quite nicely now. Look at that real sort of a tightly knit group going over the line. Great Britain looking to be in second uh, position there. So now they have to just stretch it right out. Bill Lucas, 22 years of age, sitting in the stroke seat, just stretching right out. And he's got to kick it in now into the second 500. It's about being brave for this crew, taking them on, seeing how far, getting a good rhythm and they're just going with the best in the world, of which they are surrounded. It's Switzerland in two. It's a very, very tough event. Uh, the, world, the Olympic champions, Poland, are not here. Their stroke man's injured, Coral. He's injured, so they haven't come here. They're resting him until, uh, until they get to Bled. But they've not had a great uh, year, uh, the Poles. So uh, front runners have been Croatia, but Germany are very strong. And Germany, who always dominated this event through the uh, 70s and 80s, um, uh, are now back to really a very, very strong, strong group uh, of scholars. And their quad is moving very fast indeed. Got Australia just there in the foreground. Uh, Daniel Noonan sitting in the stroke seat. There, there at the top of the picture, Great Britain doing pretty well, well in the hunt there. And um, will have taken great confidence from their victory over the world champions Croatia at Henley uh, last week. Up to the halfway mark in this final of the men's heavyweight quadruple skulls and Great Britain had a good first 500. Now, as they all sort of stretch out in that middle uh, uh, second five into the middle thousand meters here very very important to really nail the rhythm hard here the british crew up in lane at number one led by bill lucas sam townsend in the three seat stephen rowe both of them at two tom salisbury up in the bows there just a little look at germany now we're back on to watching uh, switzerland the home nation which is drawing the crowds around the rotsi here this sunday afternoon the british now though qualified with the sixth slowest time in this final so they really have to attack every single stroke. Yeah, it's their, they got off well, and uh, they, it's their, their sort of second and third 500 that really they have to lay down their pace. But the last now, this last 500 meters, can they sprint? And with a young, new crew, it's quite difficult to get that perfect timing, perfect cohesion, uh, when you're really up against it in the last 500, with everybody sprinting, and most of these crews have been working a lot together. But they're in there, they're up there, and they're in third place. Good performance now in this uh, third 500 meters. Again, it's all about stepping up, stepping up. They will have practice, as will Switzerland in lane two, the home nation here on Nordotsi. They will all have practiced race profiles at various different rates in training, so they replicate that at a higher intensity come race day, come the finals. But at the moment, it is Germany now, through the 1500 meter mark, have had a blistering third 500. The race is really tight now for the minor medal for silver and for bronze medal. Looks like Germany have just gone out in that third five, but the race really on, very tight for the silver and the bronze. And the British have got perfect, look at that water up there. It's just delightful to be out there, great rhythm. Every stroke they take, they get more and more confident down the line. Mark Banks in charge of uh, 
this crew here great inspirational coach when it comes to getting in amongst all the big names and particularly now Germany who are race leaders Germany have absolutely opened it up haven't they and Croatia world champions just now slipping further and further back on the British so it wasn't a fluke that win in uh, in Henley uh, Great Britain is really in there in the hunt and they're winding it up very well as they move into the last 300 meters Australia the world bronze medalist from 2010 world championships at Carap Hero they too now are going for the line the crowds on the far bank really enjoying this spectacle as they all snap start to head towards the line inside the closing stages out front Germany have absolutely gone away from everybody now the race really is on for the silver on the far side you have Great Britain just nudging ahead but the Australians are coming back it's Great Britain and Australia for the silver medal Great Britain and Australia and on the line the British crew what a fabulous result there it's silver for Great Britain it is bronze for Australia and this British quadruple skull are getting better and better